Hi guys, how are you? I've missed you so much, but I really did need this time off just to get over like what's been going on in life. I did not expect last week to go the way it did, but I'm gonna give you like a full update of what happened last week and where I've been and stuff like that. Okay, so I may as well get into it now while Devon's distracted and Romeo's asleep. So basically, it started last week. Well, I was still vlogging at the time, Devon was sick. Um, and he he had vomited and then he was sick and then he was just, you know, snotty and, you know, the regular. And I guess he must have passed something on to Romeo because then Romeo started to get like a little bit of a runny nose, but he was okay. And then on the Thursday, which was the last time I vlogged, that was when I took the dog to the vets. So while I went to the vets, Tyler's mum watched the two kids and um, while we were there, she said that she saw that Romeo's ear was leaking. So I was like, oh my gosh. So I had to book him a doctor's appointment for the following day. Um, but on the Thursday, when I took Levi, our dog, to the vet, it really didn't go how I thought it would. Like genuinely, we thought that he probably, like he's had episodes where he'll um, like not eat, episode like times where he won't eat but it'll last like a couple of days he'll i don't know have the runs or something and he'll come right and he'll just be back to his normal self so we kind of left it a couple of days of him not eating but then he so then we was like giving him his treats and stuff he was eating his treats like his dentist sticks and stuff like that <clears throat> and then um then it got like a couple days and he just wouldn't even eat those anymore um, like he was refusing, refusing his treats, which he's never done. So he was like, okay, we need to book him a vet's appointment. So that's what we did. Anyway, um, Tyler was saying like he thinks that he, he said he could kind of feel something like hard in his throat. So he was like, oh, I think he's swallowed something. So I was like, oh, for goodness sake, I, I reckon he's going to have to get like surgery, get this thing like cut out of him or whatever. I don't know. Um, anyway, took him and they did like an ultrasound of his stomach and he had a huge tumour in his stomach that was attached to his, I think she said it was attached to his intestine or something, but it spread and there was like little blotches everywhere on the ultrasound. So basically, yeah, we, we had to get him put down. I mean, they said he was too weak um, for surgery that day. They said he, he needs to have surgery um, or, you know, the other route, but the chances of him surviving the surgery were pretty slim. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, it was just, it was a horrible, horrible decision to have to make. And the thing is, like, I went there by myself. I was not expecting this huge, like, this news to happen. Obviously, I was absolutely beside myself, like, crying so much in the vets. I, was, I luckily Tyler had his phone on him at work so I called him and told him what was going on and we kind of did make the decision together oh my gosh but it was just so horrible and I've cried enough I'm not gonna like cry now and you know it's it's horrible horrible situation that happened but I've got to tell myself like he's in a better place he was clearly in a lot of pain like it obviously got to the point because we didn't know he had cancer like how how are you supposed to know that that a dog has cancer you know the only time that he showed signs was then when like he, when it was i guess too late and oh honestly I, it, it was just a horrible horrible thing to happen um but yeah so we ended up having him euthanized which was euthanized euthanized i can't remember how the, how you say it but anyway horrible horrible decision to have to make but also I think the right decision if he was in so much pain and this is just what I have to keep telling myself because you can't help but feel like really really guilty um but yeah I think yeah we're anyway so that's what happened with Levi and thank you so much for everybody who did reach out like on my last video you could tell like how worried I was um and I, I got a lot of messages from you guys and it honestly means so much to me because I don't know, like when knowing that people are there for you just, it feels really, really nice. And I did need a bit of support during that time because it was horrible. Like it was just really unexpected and shocking. Um, so yeah, thank you so much to everybody that messaged me. 
So now we've just been getting used to a life without a dog, which is really, really strange. Like, you know, we, not, we need to mow the grass, but the fact that, you know, the garden is now fully like for my children is just strange. Like the laundry room doesn't have his giant bed in there anymore. And I'm like doing washing and it's really easy because I don't have to like keep stepping over him. And it's just the weirdest thing. Like so strange having to get used to. And yesterday we got a card in the letter from um, the vets, which was really, really, really sweet of them. It's a sweet little card with a dog on there. Oh, and they've written a message. Dear Collins family, please accept our deepest sympathy to sympathies for the loss of your darling Levi. He was much more than a pet. He was a friend and a much loved member of your family. We hope in time you find peace in the memories you shared together and find happiness knowing you gave him a truly love-filled life. Always staff at the vet that we took him to. Um, so that was really sweet. And yeah, it's true. Like we just need to find peace in it. That's what I need to get my head around and um, because I, I have a lot of guilt, but I don't know. I, I, I know it was the right decision for sure. Like it, it was the right decision that like he wouldn't. Anyway, moving on from Levi, um, it was just going to take time to heal. Moving on. Um, then, so I got home and Romeo had, he was pretty unsettled. Anyway, I had his appointment booked for the day after because that was the only time I could get in. We went to the doctors and at that point his ears like both ears started to leak and it started to like look quite bad like a bad ear infection i always suffered with ear infections when i was a kid so i think he got that from me but i went to the doctor he prescribed us with some antibiotics and they were to take like eight hourly so in my head i don't know if this is stupid of me to not just give him a dose straight away but i was like okay every eight hours so let me do it at 10 p.m 6 a.m and 2 p.m because then you know that eight hours of sleep i don't have to like wake him up to give it to him um so it had already passed like two so i was waiting for like 10 p.m to give him and then that night i was holding him and he started vomiting but it was like, it wasn't just like a baby vomit where it's just like, you know, dribbles out of their mouth. He was actually like heaving and like trying to bring, bring up. And then what he brought up was, it was like stomach bile because he hadn't really eaten that much that day. Anyway, it's really, really um, important when they're small like that to, that they don't get dehydrated, which I knew. So I called Healthline because um, that was it. Like he had just vomited that, like that one. It wasn't one time. It was like a few times in that one time. Um, and she was, she went through, the lady on the phone went through everything and like asked me loads of questions. She was like, okay, I think you should go to emergency. So at this time it was 10 PM that night. So then I packed up and took me and Romeo to emergency and we were sitting there for four hours and we didn't get seen. And Tyler had to wake up early for work in the morning. He was here sitting with Romeo, uh, sitting with, uh, sorry, not, he was asleep. Devin was asleep. He was asleep, but he had to wake up for work. You know, it was getting on. It was like 2 a.m. And I was like, I'm going to have to go. I said it to the ladies in emergency. I was like, I'm going, I can't stay here for so long. I haven't even been seen. And in that time, that four hours that I was just sitting there in the waiting room with um, Romeo, I was offering him breast and he was taking it, keeping it down. I was also syringing him some water that the lady on the phone had said to do. I was doing all that. He was keeping it down and he really perked up. He wasn't even like drowsy in himself. Like when he vomited, it was just a vomit. Um, but I thought that we'd be able to go in and be seen and, you know. Anyway, so he was fine. I was happy to go home. And then they did like, when I said that, like we need to go, they did like a quick check over and was like, oh yeah, he's keeping it. Oh, he's all good. So it was such a waste of time. Anyway, we, we booked a um, another doctor's appointment um, and at this point, he had now been on the antibiotics. They were basically saying, just try and, once he's able to start keeping it down, start him on the antibiotics, because that's what's going to help him, you know, obviously, I knew that. Um, so, yeah, he was keeping stuff down, so I started him on the antibiotics straight away. 
and he's been on them ever since. His ear infection has completely cleared up. They did their job. He is happy, he is healthy, and he is all good. He's still on the antibiotics because he has to finish the course, but um, his ears aren't leaking anymore. He's super happy. He hasn't even vomited since that night. So he's all good. Um, Devon's all good. When, we, when I took um, Romeo to the doctors, I also took Devon for a check. Um, because he had been sick and I was like, oh, well, maybe he has like an ear infection or something as well. But he doesn't. He's all good. Um, so he was now able to like, my sister-in-law took him to his Christmas party and stuff while I stayed at home with Romeo. So he, he's been able to do stuff. And I really appreciate my sister-in-law for doing that because he was getting a bit stir crazy in the house, which I knew, like, obviously. Sorry that I'm walking around. Is that really annoying? I'm going to stop. Um, anyway, so Devin's all good. Romeo's now all good. Rest in peace to beautiful, beautiful Levi. Thank you so much, Levi, for all of the lovely memories and all of that. And, you know, yeah, he's he's in a better place now. Um, and, yeah, so I think we're over the hurdle. We're getting through. Um, it was a really, really hard week. But um, I'm ready for a really positive and happy Christmas. Um, so I need to just make the most of our time now. As soon as Romeo is allowed back out the house, we've got an appointment tomorrow, so I'm going to make sure I'm going to say, like, you know, can he be around other children um, and stuff like that, because obviously we like to go to the gym and the crash and play groups and all of that kind of thing. So I'm going to check with that and then, you know, back to normal after that. So I'm really sorry for the really long rambly update, but I feel like it was needed because of what's been going on. So... So last night, random, Devin woke up at like, gosh, I can't even remember what the time was, but it was probably like 2 a.m. or something, it was like the middle of the night. And um, I went into his room and he was screaming, like crying so much, asking me for milk. So I was like, oh, okay. So I gave him milk in the night, so that was weird. I'm also now waking up at um, in the middle of the night to give this antibiotic because of how I spaced it out, um, like how it ended up working out giving him the antibiotic because it's every eight hours so now I'm waking up every morning at like two yeah about two so it couldn't have been two and Devin woke up anyway that's uh, besides the point so my sleep has been very very restless also Romeo didn't sleep very well last night he kept one in a feed um so yeah but I'm not complaining because he, my milk supply probably dipped a bit when he wasn't when he wasn't eating right I'm just unloading the dishwasher um, and giving the kitchen a bit of a clean. Um, so today I need to go to Big W and collect a cook and collect order. So um, I ended up getting Devin a bed rail um, for his big boy bed. So basically from tonight, if we wanted to, we could put him in his new room. So I don't know. It's obviously not completed yet, but the main thing is like the bed, the bed rail, you know, it's all set up and it is ready for him to sleep in. So, um, I don't know, maybe we will. I mean, Romeo, he's not ready to go in his own room yet, but he's growing out of his um, bassinet. His, he's in the co-sleeper bassinet and now he like rolls a lot and he... Um, he is getting a bit too big for it. Like he keeps ending up this side, that side, but you know, it's not that much room for him to roll around. So I think he'll do a lot better in a cot. Um, but there's no point in us buying another cot when we've got Devon's and Devon's going into a big boy bed soon. So the sooner we can transition Devon, the sooner we can uh, transition Romeo. Mr. Man's away. Say morning. Say morning with your big eyes. Oh my, my baby. Sorry, I've just dropped water all over me. Um, but today is the 14th of December. And yesterday on the 13th of December, it was my brother's birthday. But also, um, Mark McGowan announced that our hard border will be like over on the 5th of February. So travel will be allowed. If you're double vaccinated, you don't have to quarantine. Tyler and I are double vaccinated. Um, we got ours a few weeks back now, um, but that is good. And um, so I don't know. So we want to go back to England, like, well, not back to England. Well, I want to go back to England. I want to take Tyler to England with us um, because he's never been. 
and everybody needs to meet Romeo and Devin. So my um, my mum and dad, they're uh, my mum's mum and dad, and like my mum's side of the family have met Devin. They all came here for a holiday uh, to when Devon was four months old so that Christmas there was a big big family Christmas my mum and dad also came when I had Devon they came and stayed for a month um my mum missed the birth she she planned to come on the birth but I ended up having him early anyway that was a whole thing but that was the last time that they saw Devon that Christmas and obviously nobody's met Romeo so <gasps> we just so long to go and everybody to meet my um my boys because yeah also my dad's side of the family they didn't come on that trip and um, so they haven't even met Devon so I'm gonna I left there like a single well actually I wasn't single I was with Tyler we did a long distance so I left there just um just me and I'm coming back with two babies like is that so crazy um, so everybody needs to meet them. I, honestly, if this border hadn't have happened, like, obviously we would have been like probably twice already. Like they would have met them for sure. Um, but yeah, it's I'm starting to finally see a way out of this horrible, horrible time, and I'm so excited. Um, also, I mentioned it before on my channel, but my auntie Kim, she is Nanny Kim here on YouTube. She's she's got a YouTube channel, and she's doing like a series um, called The Race to Mace. So she, her daughter is my cousin Holly. She's the one who's always on my channel, the one I gave a pedicure to a couple of weeks ago on my channel. Um, that's her mum. And Holly also has two boys. Her older boy, um, like everybody's met because she's been able to go home, but she had her boy Mace in August of 2020 and no one has met Mace, not even her mum hasn't even met Mace. Um, so she is, um, and he's like already like one, he turned one in August, so that's crazy. Um, obviously no one's met Romeo, but Romeo is only four, five months old. <clears throat> but yeah, so she plans on coming here ASAP. Um, and it's all being documented on her channel, The Race to Mace. And she does like little updates of everything that's going on. So now that this announcement's been like happened, I have a feeling her vlogs are just going to be the best um like she's going to vlog her coming here meeting him and all of that so i think that you guys should follow along with that journey as well because that's really exciting also her vlogs are hilarious she vlogs like once a month so they're not like as consistent but she does like big updates of everything and what's going on because obviously it's not um it's not something she can keep going on about you know so she does monthly updates but it's nice to keep up with her come in Devon. Um, so I think now that the borders, like now that we've got our date, February 5th, I think she'll be booking her flight soon. So she'll be coming. Um, my mum and dad won't, but we plan on going there. And then everybody's coming here for Christmas of 2022. So we've got so much to look forward to. I'm so excited to see everybody. Um, but yeah, I think Kim will be the first person that we see from England. So I'm even so excited to see her and for her to meet, um, to meet Romeo. She's obviously met Devon, but it'd be lovely. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, come in, Devon. Look at Sarah. Morning, Devon. Morning, Devon. <laughs> he built a tower with his toast, and he's very proud of himself. I've stuck him here in front of the TV, and he's making a big old mess. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Hey, I'm just feeding Romeo and then we're going to give Devin some lunch. We just got back from the shops, so that has been our first outing in ages. And it was really good, it was successful. Um, I think I'm almost done with Christmas shopping. I managed to get Tyler's Secret Santa. Uh, I can't show the present because the family watches my videos. Um, so I got Tyler's Secret Santa. I think that is 100% sorted, but I'll have to get it all out and see like what I have and, and stuff. Um, and I've got a few other bits for Devon. I don't know if that'll be from us or from, um, some of the England people's money that they sent. I need to like, that's another thing I need to sort out. I need to like, you know, go through all of that and decide. But yeah, he got a few extra bits and then he got this damn mango that he wanted it. We was 
pushing like I was pushing them in the pram and he was at the bottom and then he saw it and he wanted it I want a mango I want a mango and then I went carried on walking and he just cried so much for this mango so I got him the mango <laughs> and it's really cute I like it so it's fine um but yeah that's just for now I'll show you that in a minute and I also collected Devin's um bedroll so I'm gonna set that up set set that up now whilst um whilst he is eating his lunch probably um and yeah Romeo is in the best mood hello my baby hello my baby hello my happy boy oh papa oh papa <laughs> lunch is mango strawberry and a cheese toasty I have avocado beans and salsa so <clears throat> I'm going to set up the um, bed rail. I ended up getting this one and we take it out of the packaging. So it was from Big W, but they were having 25% off and I knew I needed to get one. So I got this one. Right. This one. And yeah, I'm going to see. I've never actually seen one of these get set up before, so I don't really know how it works, but it said this bed has got slats and it said it's for any bed, like slat and not. So, and I got it in the grey colour because his bedding is grey. Okay, this is how it looks. I don't really recommend it, to be honest, because, I don't know, like, if you pull on it, the whole mattress lifts up because this mattress is quite light. It's quite a small mattress. Um, but whatever, it'll do the job. But yeah, I think that is secure enough for him. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna wrap up the vlog now. It's already at about 20 minutes, um, but thank you for watching. Um, if you liked it, like the video, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow, bye.